During a recent Discord conversation, the question was asked whether we could create this 3D banner or 3D text on a banner sort of masked into the background in DaVinci Resolve, so I thought I'd give it a go. So a quick search of the internet and we found an image that we can use. So what we're going to do is basically put our text across the top of the, the image here and we'll mask it out around the, the girl's head. So the first thing I needed to do, I quite like the blue colour scheme. So I'm going to quickly take the new clip into the color tab. Now what I want is for the background to be blue but for her to keep the color that she's got so I'm going to use a power window here and I'm going to quickly mask around her. Now for the sake of the tutorial the mask is a bit rough and ready. I would suggest you take a bit of time over this and with any mask really try and get it as clean as you can. I've also speeded it up so you don't have to get bored watching me do a really bad mask. So as you see, the girl is currently masked. So if we click this button here, it will invert the mask so that she will hold a color and everything else will change. You can use these controls at the bottom just to soften off the mask a little bit so that the change isn't quite as abrupt. And once we have it to our liking, I didn't do any fancy colour correction because I don't know the colour tab that well to be honest with you. Uh, all I did was I came down to the hue control and dropped the hue all the way down to zero which just gave me my blue and then dropped the saturation down to about 30%. This gave me the, the kind of look that I wanted. As you can see, you can just see the softening on the mask. Again, do your mask slowly and properly. So back in the edit tab, we're ready to sort of start looking at our 3D text. However, if we go straight into Fusion, we lose the color grading. Um, so what we need to do is right click and convert this to a compound clip that seems to burn in the color correction that we've made and then we can go into fusion and we have the image that we want to work with so once we've tidied up our node graph what we're going to do is put the text along the top of the the image and the text is going to be 3D text, so we need to build our 3D environment. All 3D environments need a merge 3D, a render 3D, and in this instance we're going to need a camera. We'll merge our 3D environment back onto our 2D image. At the minute nothing shows because we've done nothing. So with our text 3D node added, we'll now drag the merge 3D into the other viewer so that we can see our 3D scene and put our text into our text 3D node. In the 3D screen, we can check our text change font size line spacing etc just the same as you can do with the text node in the edit tab so once we're happy with that we can use our 
option key and middle mouse button to swivel around to look at our text as you say it's as you can see it's flat at the minute so we're going to come into the extrude tab and we're going to add some depth to it and we'll also add a slight bevel now if we look at our text again you can see that it's now a 3d object If you come up to this button at the top here, you can actually turn simulated lights on so that you can get a better idea of what you're working with. At the minute, the scene isn't lit. It's just simulated. So now if we click our camera and we can drag the camera around using the axis handles, we can start to see the text over our original image. So you'd use your camera to sort of position your text. Now I don't like it, there's two lines, so I'm going to make it back to one. So again, using your camera, you can get your text to roughly the size you want it in your screen, in your image. So next we're going to come to our render 3D node and activate lighting. Our text will instantly turn black because we don't have any lights at the moment. But we will rectify that presently. So if we press shift and space bar We'll open our selection tool, we can search for directional light. I'm using directional light purposefully because it gives the effect I want better than a spotlight does. So we'll pipe our directional light into our Merge 3D and you can see that the text is now illuminated. Um, you can pull your directional light back and it will make no difference at the minute the light is pointing directly at the texts um, the thing with the directional light is it doesn't matter where you put it it's about the angle that it's pointing at so effectively you can move it around and put it anywhere you want in your scene that's sort of convenient really so once we've got it somewhere handy we will come up and select the rotate button at the top of the viewer and you get these three axes circles now the one we're interested in is the red axes which will rotate it around the x axis now if you watch the text as I drop down you can see that the light starts to hit and emphasize different points of your 3d object So what we're going to do is we're going to come into our camera and we're going to position our camera first. Now the easiest way for something like this to position your camera, because at the moment if you move it up and down it continues to point in the same direction, i.e. along the z-axis, but what I wanted to do is focus on this bit of the text, which coincidentally is at the central point of your 3D world 0, 0, 0. So all you need to do is check use target in the inspector and now the camera will always focus on this point. You can slightly adjust it to help position your text. And now when we move our camera around it will continue to look at the point that we set. So what we need to do to get the view that we wanted is drop the camera right down and as you come low you see that the text will start to tilt and you get that effect where you have the bottom edge of the text visible. So once we've positioned the camera where we want it you can see the edge of the text 
And now if we come up to our directional light and rotate it along or around, sorry, the X axis with the red circle, if you watch the bottom of the text will gradually get more illuminated. So just rotate it till you get the sort of amount of illumination that you want on this bottom edge. Now what we're going to do is add the colour to the text. Now at the moment the text will be all one colour because you're using only one material here. If you uncheck the use one more, yeah, you, sorry, it, as you can see, it, you change the colour and it changes the face and the edge of the text. However, if we uncheck the use one material, what happens is that you now have your face material and your bevel material. The bevel material will affect the edge of your text. So what we can now do is add a, a colour to the face of our text. And we'll go for a, a blue to sort of fit in with the, the general, scene, uh, general scene. And you'll see as I bring the colour in, the edges stay white. So we now have our sort of white edge that's illuminated with our direction of light and our blue face. What we can also do is increase the size of the bevel a little bit, which will give what appears to be a white outline to our text. Again, this is a sort of trial and error thing as to how much bevel gives the best sort of look. So I've gone with 0 0.02, which looks kind of reasonable. So if we come back into our camera, we can now tweak the target Y value to raise and lower the text to where we want it on the screen. And as you can see at the minute, the girl's head is behind the text, as is her rifle or gun or whatever it is. What we need to do then is mask the text so that her head shows through. To do this, I'm going to drag a polygon node and just drop it into the mask input of the merge. And again, we're going for the mask, much as I said with the, the Colour screen mask, I'm rushing it. Um, take your time, get your mask as clean as you can. So we're going to mask around her head and around her sort of rifle. And now as you see the text appears inside the mask. What we need is it the other way around. So if we come over to the inspector and just check the invert button. And now we have basically the effect we wanted. Uh, you can use a soft edge on the mask just to sort of blend the sort of mask a little bit so it's not quite as obvious, I suppose. Um, again, play around with it till you get the sort of effect you want. And now we're starting to get the effect we were after. If you've got other objects sort of in other parts of the, the scene that you want to mask, you can just add another mask in. Uh, but for now, we've got the one mask that we need. The final bit is to just add a little bit more sort of text, which I'm going to put over the sort of ugly monster thing, whatever it is. Uh, so we'll merge that onto what we already have. And again, like any text node, change your font, your color, size, etc. To get it how you want it, you can reposition it 
by dragging it using the, the sort of handles on the center point. Size it, color it. What I did was I went into the merge node and actually use the blend setting to reduce the opacity of this bit of text. And there's a, a little thing on the end, shift and space bar and add a glow. Select your glow node and tweak it to your desired look. And again, maybe drop the opacity a little bit more. And that is basically what we were after. Now, depending on how you want to use this, we can open the crop section of the inspector and we can crop the top and bottom to make it look more like a banner if you want to use it as a static banner. Alternatively, if you want to use it as some sort of animated intro to your video, you can do that as well fairly easily. If we come back into Fusion, we can animate our text to appear. So selecting your 3D text, put your playhead where you want the text to be fully visible, keyframe it, back to the beginning of your frame uh, clip and drop the size to zero. Now as you play through, your text will appear, but will still be masked by, a, by our mask that we put around the girl's head. You can do the same with your secondary text. Decide where you want it to be fully sized, keyframe it, go back to where you want it to be dis uh, disappeared and drop the size to zero. Now as you play through, you get your main text and your subtext appear. And as I say, you can use that as a animated intro to a video or whatever. And that's pretty much it. Um hope you found this um, either educational or entertaining, or you never know, maybe both. Feel free to subscribe, leave a like, hit the notification bell, etc. Would be appreciated. And just a quick question, uh, leave a comment if you want to. What do you think of the new ident at the beginning? Do you prefer the one I used today or do you like the old one with the sort of dissolving white text? I say if you want to leave a comment. Cheers, see you on the next one.